Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson, the third topic in Chapter 9, Arousal. As always, we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your exam, and today you need to be able to define arousal and explain the effects of under and over arousal, interpret the inverted U theory of arousal, and identify the signs of optimal arousal for different skills. Arousal, our key term for the lesson, can be defined as an increased level of mental excitement and alertness. It's the state of being enthusiastic and mentally and physically ready to compete, and having the right level of arousal is essential if you're to perform at your best. If an athlete is under aroused, they may not be focused or excited enough to perform effectively and are likely to lack drive and determination. To mitigate against this, athletes use a range of techniques to pump themselves up before or during competition. For example, New Zealand's rugby team performs a ritual dance called the Hacker to raise their arousal levels prior to kickoff. Athletes can also become over-aroused, however, which often results in stress, anxiety and nervousness, becoming psyched out by the opposition, and physiological symptoms such as an increased breathing and heart rate, sweaty palms, nausea, and muscle tremors or shakiness. Too much arousal can therefore lead to mistakes and sub-optimal performances. In 1908, two psychologists named Yerkes and Dodson came up with a theory called the inverted U theory that explains the relationship between arousal and performance. According to this theory, as arousal increases, performance will also increase, but only until an optimal level is reached. We refer to athletes who reach this level as being in the zone. A flow state is achieved and performers are determined and focused on the task at hand. As arousal continues to increase beyond this point, performance will begin to drop. Remember, over arousal leads to stress, anxiety, and a number of physical symptoms, all of which have a negative impact on performance. So evidently reaching an optimal level of arousal is beneficial, but what does that level look like, and is it always the same? Well, the simple answer is no, as Yerkes and Dodson also stated that the optimal point varies depending on an individual's skill level, their personality characteristics, and the nature of the task or skill being performed. For example, activities that require fine skills such as archery or snooker require high levels of precision and accuracy, meaning performers operate best at lower levels of arousal. Too much arousal here may affect their ability to remain calm and produce controlled, delicate movements. Gross skills, on the other hand, for example a rugby tackle, 100m sprint, javelin throw or boxing, require much higher levels of arousal. These skills involve large powerful movements and athletes need to be determined, focused and both physically and mentally excited if they're to perform at the required intensity. At this point, if you don't quite understand what the terms gross and fine mean in the context of skills, I recommend you go and watch my video on skill classification by clicking on the banner. Now you'll need to be able to identify the level of arousal required for a variety of different skills, so why not pause the video now and have a go at ranking these examples. You should place the skill with the highest optimal level at the top. Now don't worry if your list isn't exactly the same as the one presented here, as ranking skills isn't an exact science. Gross skills that require physical readiness, drive and determination require higher levels of arousal and should be placed near the top. Fine skills, on the other hand, rely on a calm, relaxed approach and are therefore performed best when arousal is lower. Now you've just covered everything you need to know on topic 9.3, arousal. During our next lesson, we'll look at the causes and symptoms of anxiety in sport, so make sure you come back for that one. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one.